I thought I would share my experiences with Slip Doctor. First, I checked the available internet YouTubes and found that there appeared to be four different types of Slip Doctor products. I was unsure which one was for me, but looking on Amazon, it seems like only the Stone Grip was available. Our bakeries in Denver, Colorado, where we get a lot of snow and have a clientele that much of our elderly people. Our temporary solution has been to put all these rugs on the floor because our ceramic tile gets extremely slippery when wet. People bring snow on their shoes and that melts off and I can't tell you how slippery this floor is. It was almost impossible to mop it. My first question was, does Slip Doctor work? Let me say unequivocally, it does. We have three different types of flooring here. We have a polyaspartic floor back in the kitchen area which works very well when it's wet, has a natural non-slip characteristic provided it's not covered with a soapy film. We actually have two types of ceramic tile. Our original portion here may be 30 years old and when we opened up into the newer half we got a newer 8x8 eight eight tile that doesn't match perfectly well in color. One of the instructions suggests that you use a test area to determine if it's compatible with your flooring. Well, I tried that in one corner, but didn't really wait for it to dry, so unless you're prepared to let it completely dry, the test is going to be rather meaningless. When uh, I did apply it, we applied it to the kitchen area first, wondering how it would look and what changes would take place and how well it would perform. One of the most useful tips I found is rather than using a pre-prescribed amount of time to leave it on, to use your foot to see how it slips to determine the time. Our older floor here treated and became slip resistant much quicker than the newer tile over here. I it is very difficult to perceive any optical difference. The first application I came around from the behind the deli area up to around where the blue flower pot is and you notice somewhat less of a sheen. It's slightly less glossy. Didn't notice any color discoloration. It's kind of hard to see photographically but it basically etches the glass surface on the tile. After finding it works so well, we're now prepared to do the customer area here after I remove the mats. The one mistake I made in the first application is I was worried about the neutralizer, so I figured, well, I'll make two gallons of that. Four tablespoons of baking soda is cheap enough. And then uh, doubled down the neutralizer and spent an inordinate <clears throat> amount of time making baking soda. When I received my product it came in a plastic bag and it's a good thing because the first bottle actually leaked in the bag. The air pressure is so <clears throat> low in Colorado the bottles arrived pressurized. Another big concern I had is that this product is so aggressive it can etch glass I didn't want it ruining my high-priced bifocals, my <clears throat> fancy wristwatch, cellular phone. I'm even a little worried about my camera, but I haven't opened up anything yet. I'll put this away before I start. A cheap $13 <clears throat> sprayer is essential, and then I use a scrub brush. I find it works very well 
the slight sheen of the floor that's missing. You can see beyond, we still have a sheen, but it's not enough, and it certainly eliminates the dangerous slipping of the floor. I hope that helps you, and you have good luck and prevents someone from getting injured on your floor. I'm glad I used this project product. Thank you.